Hey everybody, welcome one and all to the Disc Only Podcast. Welcome to the April 2022 episode of the Disc Only Podcast. I'm Proton John, and the April Fool's joke I wish was real was the Lord of the Rings kart racing game. I'm Tom Fox, and smash. Smash. Oh, man. Pass. I, uh, Pass. Sorry. Smash. Mm. Sorry. I <laughs> I was starting to say my thing, and then Tom wasn't done, so I decided to stretch. <laughs> but then I was like, wait, I think Tom is done. But then I was starting to talk, but then he wasn't done. So that was just weird. I'm Steven. <laughs> and I'm Jared, and Tom wasn't done. <laughs> Tom, do you have a that little bit more? That was the joke. <laughs> uh, smash. Smash. <laughs> you just right. Markiplier. Like. <laughs> so, so we have 700 more left to rate. So hang on, let's just give them. That some was time. my that, that was my April Fool's video. I made a smash or pass of Super Smash Brothers characters where I just said, like I, I put in characters that weren't in Smash and said pass on them. It said smash on all the characters that were in Smash. <laughs> oh my god! I didn't catch that. Oh, that's that's freaking great. That's very good. Uh, I did an anti subathon for April Fool's Day. <laughs> stop following me <laughs> so what i did was uh i i said we had three hours and for every every gifted sub or whatever it took time off the stream so i only streamed for <laughs> half a day <laughs> that is brilliant that's funny <laughs> good i have to i have to give credit to uh my buddy dell for that Del K made that idea and he was just like that worked way better than i thought it ever would have <laughs> We, uh, I say we as if it involved anyone other than myself. Um, I made a broken picture phone episode that was just me, and you can't play that game with without more than one person. But I did it, and the video is forty five seconds long. <laughs> <laughs> one one phrase you will not hear about it in this podcast. You have to go watch the video. I gotta I gotta make that whole thing into a video. I have not had a chance to work on any YouTube content the past couple of days. I've been busy as frick. I wanted to do an April Fool stream as well, but like I kind of missed the missed the boat in that because I didn't have time to prepare anything. So I opened Yu-Gi-Oh cards and then picked one card from every pack and dunked it in a bowl of water. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> that 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 went in a very different direction than what I thought it was going to. I was Same. really hoping it was going to be. I picked one card from every pack and I ate it. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing uh after that pile of cards was uh was steeping for a while i did partake of the what i referred to as the Yu-Gi-Oh jungle juice and it tasted <laughs> it tasted oh. very chemically so i spit it out <laughs> oh. Oh. Man, was it was it like boiling hot water so you no, actually no no, got no, no, it? no 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 it was just, it was just like it was just just like cold tap water this this man made Yu-Gi-Oh tea <laughs> ew <laughs> Oh, uh, the smell of Wizards of the Coast. <laughs> oh my god, there's so like I I think I got like 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 five thousand percent of my daily recommended value of, of essential inks. Inks? <laughs> oh my god, man. Ew. That that's that's disgusting. <laughs> that was I, that was well, uh, the intention wasn't to partake of the Yu-Gi-Oh jungle juice, but it uh it, it, it the push came it. to shove. Yeah. Th <laughs> things happened. Dude, that sounds like a, a like a Jules bumper. That, that, <laughs> <laughs> it's like instead of like, preparing the cheese, it's in ketchup. I'm, pre I'm preparing Yu-Gi-Oh cards in a bowl of water to to sip upon. Oh my <laughs> god, <laughs> that that is like the most disgusting thing. <laughs> Holy I cow. mean, it's not my beverage of choice, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> to each their own. They say. Listen, to I know, like own. no. Uh, Steven, you still go for the Wizards of the Bro Coast brand. I know you you partake of uh, of Magic the Gathering tea. <laughs> <laughs> you yes, know. One, once a week I open a fresh booster pack and I steep for 20 minutes before enjoying <laughs> and puking all over the carpet. <laughs> Freaking, you know, a little bit of honey and a pot of greed and you're all set. <laughs> sometimes, oh. I save, sometimes I save time and just burn money. <laughs> See, I'm just like, going to rip the, up some dollar bills. See, the problem is you have to you have to steep the cards that specifically label things that are actually food on them. So, like, you know, I had a lovely um, berry and lemon tea by steeping berry magician girl and lemon magician girl. Real cards, <laughs> by the way. 
I'm going to let you know right now, if you're not steeping your cards long enough to get the holographic foil to float off, you're not doing <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to throw I, I up put, today. So, so like, <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're five minutes in. <laughs> I, have, I have friends that play Yu-Gi-Oh!, and after I saw what the water was doing to them, it, it wasn't like taking off a lot of the stuff. It was just kind of like making them like curl. So like I was going to be like, OK, let's see how like what a day of steeping these in water does to make them curl up more. And they just kind of like stopped after a while and not a lot of it came off. I probably should have like shaken it to make like kind of agitated a little bit. Oh, my God, dude. Uh, you have, what you what you have to do is you have to squeeze the cards just like you squeeze the tea bag. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one who does that. Oh, golly. Like, like me and Erica, we usually buy, like, loose-leaf teas. Um, we, ha we had a tea store in our hometown that was really, really good. But I, I, don't, I, I don't know why, but I just like using a tea bag rather than the steeping. I guess because you have to, like, clean everything afterwards. It's just like, Oh, eh. it's a whole process. Yeah, yeah. I've got multiple opinions about this, but you go ahead. No, no, <laughs> that, that's basically <laughs> it. I just, like... Um, yeah, I, dude, the the throat coat tea is probably my favorite. Like that that stuff is just god tier. I get the uh, the throat comfort tea from uh, from Yogi. I like that a lot. The, their deep breath tea is also really good. Mm. Yeah, the advantage of loose the advantage <laughs> of the loose leaf tea is that you get to decide how strong your tea is. True. Well, I mean, but, like that's it, and the convenience factor is pretty great. You can yeah. just throw in a bag and be like, well. I mean, That's you could it. always you could always kind of make it stronger. You can add two or add an extra one. You know, sure. I guess. I mean, yeah, but it's it's in a very specific. You can't have yeah, like one and a half unless precisely. Yeah, you're it, right. It's it's incremental as opposed to being like, you <laughs> yeah. know, however you want it. What is that, that logarithmic said, you, comparatively? If, if How you strong want, do you want? You want this? strong tea? One, you just let the two, tea in there. or dare I say, three bags. Oh, this is actually this leads into a great question. Does everyone here drink tea? No. Nope. Like you? Uh, no. Well, no. then you are excluded from this discussion. <laughs> I just don't like oh, warm goodness. drinks. Like, it's the same At reason all? I don't like soup. Yeah, same reason I don't like soup. John, That's do you fair. like hot chocolate? No. Oh, I'm out of ideas. <laughs> Moving on. No. Like, yeah, I, could totally, I could totally get that. Because, like, there's just certain things that don't, like, you know, mesh well with me either. So. I'll try anything at least once. <laughs> But Jared and Tom, you guys drink you guys drink tea. Uh, yes. mostly like like the herbal, like non caffeinated stuff, but yes. Yeah, me too. How how long do you okay. Actually let me phrase this a different way. Do you remove the tea bag? No. I, I do after either. I do after like ten minutes. Okay. Yeah. It's it's one of those things that when if you have a discussion with a like a, a tea, <laughs> a tea person, connoisseur. Yeah, a tea person, TM. Um, they have strong <laughs> opinions about how long the steeping process must be, and then you, depending on the type of tea, you remove the bag. And uh, growing up, we just did not remove the bag, and into adulthood, I do not remove the bag. That's fair. I mean, um, like it, it's it's a it's a matter it's a matter of taste, and also like how, for lack of a better term, anal. Uh, the the tea person is about like about how long the uh the tea is like steeped, and um, it, it, you know is like is like steep for like like how uh <laughs> precise do they want to be with creating the perfect <laughs> cup of tea. Uh, the word okay. you were looking for was specific. Thank but you. Thank you. Anal, anal will work. <laughs> I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try and bring. I'm gonna try and bring John back in on this. John. Yes. Cold tea. No. Well, you're still excluded then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's so, it's all right. Really steep, times. You can't really steep tea in cold water. What about um, John? Do you do you partake in ramen noodles? Nope. Wow. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You don't drink tea. You don't eat ramen. What do you eat, John? <laughs> Pizza. Bananas. Yeah. We we found it at Coliseum a few years ago that you eat bananas. <laughs> yeah too many <laughs> too many yeah, apparently there steve was so excited he found something i actually ate he's like we gotta buy all of it we gotta make sure he's not going hungry. <laughs> this might be we the only to... thing he eats for the next three days we have to make we have sure to... ba -da -ba -da -ba 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 -ba. 
I remember um, we we made that uh, we made that bumper, and there's a lot of people that are like, "How oh, man? How much did you spend on bananas?" And I was like, "Well, we went to Costco, so like three dollars." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like bananas. Very, I need to get a, me- need to get a membership there. Um, they got they got good deals. I I read one time that um, bananas were the number one sold item at Walmart. Is that true? I could believe that. I mean, I. I, I don't possess that knowledge, Jared. I, I can't. By, <laughs> by, Steven, you have to know. <laughs> by what? By what metric? By like by unit? By weight? Like I'm 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 really curious as to like what the where the metric like came from here. By uh by income? All right, I have, Bro, I have found is... a list of the 11 plus most sold items at Walmart. Okay, here we go. Thank All God. Right. This Number is, one, bananas. Damn it. 2022, apparently, which is impressive because we're only four months in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sure, I, I'm already on board with this very factual right. piece of information. <laughs> All right, so number, uh, I'm, do you want to make any guesses, or am I just gonna start going down eleven to one? I will. I will say toilet paper might be one. Toilet paper is on the list. Oh, ding ding ding! <laughs> Are we oh, doing man. this Family Feud style? Let's do a Family Feud style, baby. What, what, that was, what does that was everybody need? Let's see, because oh, like everybody really needs toilet one. paper. Toilet paper was number two. Um. Oh. I'm gonna say. Why does butter. everyone need more than toilet? <laughs> oh, bottled water is a good, bottled good one. Butter is not on the list. Dan Lube is not on the list. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> genuinely surprising. <laughs> uh, is, bo- is bottled water on the list? No. Hmm. Wow. All right, Jared wins. What do we got? All right, number eleven is crayons. <laughs> you know, fair. <laughs> what? <laughs> Customers Crayola with kids probably it. won't be all surprised. See, Crayola crayons on our list of the most sold items at Walmart. A set of three packs with 24 crayons, and each has been in particular high demand over the last few years. Crayola specifically? Yeah, makes sense. Wow. Hmm. Number 10, okay. pillows. Ah, uh, okay. Yep. Number nine, insulated tumblers. So traffic is happening at Walmart. That aisle's always bumping, though. Like, they have, like, so many good ones. Like, That's you know true. that one aisle where it's just cups, like really nice cups yeah, that you can yeah, buy? Yeah. I freaking love that. And I look at it and I'm like, <laughs> I'm never going to use this if I buy it. So, Number eight, paper towels. That was going to be my next guess. Yeah, that's a, that's yep. a really good Toilet one. Paper. Number seven, disposable washcloths. Disposable washcloths? Disposable, disposable washcloths? Yeah. What? Well, I guess disposable that? makes sense. They have to come back for more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a good a good business model, I guess. <laughs> Number six, flushable wipes. Fair babies. Yep. Yeah, anything, any any product that people need repeatedly. Any any product that's flushable, people are gonna buy. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking okay, of flushable, John, you, got, num- you gotta stop at two because I want I want us to try and figure out what one is. <laughs> Number five. Speaking of most flushable, Google Chromecast. What? Like like the the device? Yeah. That's wow. nuts. I would expect people to be buying those up more than paper towels. It, that's yeah. got. It's got to be by. It, that's got to be by like by how much profit they made. Because if it's by <laughs> unit, I can imagine paper towels would outweigh Google Chromecast by a metric ton. It doesn't. This right, doesn't so. even say where it's pulling this info from. I. This is the funny thing about it. It's. It's got to. It's got to <laughs> be by what. By what makes the most money. It can't be by unit. I'm gonna go get my. You know. Well, money would make my sense weekly cause groceries. Because number, number four is TVs. Yeah. Yeah, that, that makes, makes total sense. sense. Fair, I see plenty of people go to Walmart for TVs. That makes a lot of yeah. sense to me. Especially number, on Black Friday. Number three surprises me because it's slow cookers. Uh, that makes sense. Huh. People people buy slow cookers all the time for gifts. Nobody yes. uses them, but they people buy them all the time for gifts. Bro, I use slow cookers. Okay. Well, okay. Claire, I, think, Erica does. I think I have a genuinely like fair guess for for <laughs> number one. I'm gonna say um greeting cards. No. Steven, we already okay. said what the number one was earlier. <laughs> Wait, no, we did? Number two. Number two is toilet paper. Yeah. Oh, and number one is just bananas then. Yeah, number one is bananas. Hey! Oh, number one oh, it is bananas. Where are they sourcing this from? I thought, I thought I we made that. <laughs> I don't know. And we were trying to figure it out. Uh, hang on. Cool. Ooh, Walmart so reveals the five top selling items of every year since 2010. Ooh, hang on. Ooh. God, oh, I, we're getting I, into I, the top ten list now. I love oh, here this. We go, oh, baby. Here God. we go. <laughs> oh, this 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 list is interesting. All right. So so I'm sorry. What was this list? It, this this list is <laughs> okay. So I found a top five selling items of every year since 2010, going up to 2019. 
I'm just going to tell you the top one of each year because okay. some of these are ridiculous. <laughs> no, we want to go through all 90. <laughs> <laughs> all 90 this is the rest of the podcast. Welcome to the podcast. Walmart only podcast. <laughs> Not sponsored by Walmart, but yeah. Uh, Give us a call. I, re- I refuse for us to put a Walmart in in our mall where we record this podcast. Okay. <laughs> 2010, the top sold item was Mead Composition Notebook Wide Ruled 100 Sheets. God. Well, so a lot that of people went to college that year. That <laughs> beat out iPod Touch 8 gigabyte with FaceTime camera and retina display. SanDisk 4 gigabyte memory card. A Matic 10-in-1 accessory kit for MP3 players and Apple iPod. And Walmart site to store express membership. <laughs> You know Man. what that that makes uh that makes sense to me why like a notebook would be the most selling at least for that era because not everybody had a laptop back then. Also, yeah. that list is just a time capsule. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is very fun. What was the iPod? Apple iPod uh, Touch, eight gigabyte with FaceTime camera and Retina display. Dude, I freaking had one of those. Oh so my god, that must god. have been around like the i, I iPhone four or iPhone three G. Well, good news, because the top-selling item of 2011 was Apple iPod Touch 8 gigabyte with FaceTime camera and retina display. <laughs> Again? Dude. That Finally beat out, beat out the, the notebook. Yeah, that beat out <laughs> AT&T Go phone, prepaid Samsung cell phone, Philips Norelco men's shaving system, Sentin 4 gigabyte memory card, and Apple iPod Touch 4th generation 32 gigs. <laughs> I mean, dude, Apple was on it at that, yeah. that year. The, it, it's dude. it's interesting because when I think of like the success of iPods, I think of the classic with the the click wheel. But <coughs> yeah. honestly, the success continued on into the iPod Touch. A lot of yeah. people oh, yeah. have them. Dude, I'm laughing and looking at this list. Fucking 2012's top selling item was the Ematic six in one accessory kit for Apple iPods and MP3 players. <laughs> <laughs> Followed by the Scepter 32 inch class LCD 720p TV, the Canon Pixma all in one inkjet photo printer copier scanner, articulating flat panel TV wall mount, and HP DeskJet inkjet printer copier scanner. So, Printers were the top items of 2013. Dude, or 2012. People, 2012. People were I mean, that it's so, man, again, time capsule. I'm kind of surprised capsule. that, like, printer ink... Well, I guess people weren't printing out as much, but, like, printer ink should be showing up because uh, printer ink <laughs> by volume costs twice as much as human blood. Uh, that's that's the, next year. That's next the year. Tom, They're just the, buying printer ink. <laughs> the reason that the printers are so high is that it was cheaper to just buy a new printer. That's true, so that it was just buy ink cartridges. Yeah. Also, that is not exaggerated. There have been times where it has been cheaper to buy a printer. Yep, that's true. 2013. Look at all the garbage we're making. Dude. <laughs> Dude. Oh my god. Sorry, I'm skimming through this. This is list is ridiculous. I'm just gonna jump to the number ones again. 2013, next book seven inch eight gigabyte tablet. 2014, hmm. Scepter 32 inch class HD 720p LED TV. 2015, Apple iPad Mini 2, 16 gig. 2016, Ozark Trail 30 ounce insulated stainless steel tumbler, barely beating out yeah. the Ozark Trail 20 ounce insulated stainless steel tumbler, the Google Chromecast, <laughs> full motion TV wall mount with tilt, swivel, articulating arm, and HDMI cable, and the Sony PlayStation 4 Slim Uncharted 4 system game combo. Wow. I Wait, really love tumbler. The- the t- I love the idea that everyone was like, we got to get these Hold iPods. On. We got to get these iPods. And then it turned into, we got to get these tumblers. <laughs> I, I, I got to look this up because like, I'm thinking like, because in, okay, no, okay. It's a different company altogether. Because when you said Ozark, like the Ozark tumblers, my first thought was like the bottled water company. That makes sense. They're both drinkware, but like, but no, they're two different. They're two different. Yeah. Oh, it's Ozark, Ozark Trail, Trail is a yeah. Yeah, outdoor equipment place. They also have the 2017 top selling item being again the 30 ounce insulated stainless steel tumbler. 2018 <laughs> is that damn 32 inch TV again, barely beating out the 50 inch version of the TV. 2019 was that instant pot we were talking about earlier. And that's what I have on this list here. I think that's what I bought mine. <laughs> yeah, you, you contributed to this list. Huh? <laughs> I don't remember where I got it from. I don't know if it was from Walmart or not. Hmm. Oh man, that's crazy. And, and what's funny about that is like, there's not a lot of game systems on there except for like the PS4. Yeah. Like that's surprising. I mean, I'll go back and like, double check to see if there's anything else there I didn't mention in the top five, but it did seem like that that PS4 bundle was the only one that was there. Was this by, was this by sales amount or by number of units sold? 
Walmart has revealed its top online sellers from over the last 10 years appear during which the company's blah, 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 blah. online sellers. So this is this is probably units sold through the online store. Yeah, more than likely. Yeah, here's a full that list of makes... Walmart.com's best selling items every year since 2010. Hmm. Okay. So a little so a little store. ambiguous, but Okay. <laughs> They're doing their best. <laughs> people people are buying online, cups. cups. People people are buying cups through Walmart.com though. Oh man, one yeah, year man. the number two item was literally bounty select a size paper towels. Oh, was and Pie Face Game. Pie Face Game was number three in 2015. <laughs> wow! Uh, I, I think that's got to be when that took off then. Has to be. And it's yeah, always funny. Uh, there's, there's no other consoles on here. It literally, like all the other stuff I mentioned that list earlier is shown up, like Crayola Crayons, the Tumblers, the Instant Pots. Hmm. Paper towels, disposable washcloths, all that have popped up. It's so weird that like gaming companies used to have to like like get in touch with retailers and basically ask them to put their stuff into their stores. <laughs> and like, now it's like, yo, no, you pay us. You know, like I love the fact that it's kind of like turned on its head. It's kind of like like they used to be like in the in the old days like they call up on the phone and they'd hear who it is about to hang up and the person would be like wait 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 we have we have a console we want you to sell please please don't hang up <laughs> like um I've been I've been looking or like watching a lot of videos on the history of like Nintendo and like big people um in Nintendo and stuff like that and I think it was Reggie actually was the first person to kind of switched that around he took a big risk doing that but it worked out like it was like no no you're gonna pay us to have our stuff in here you know because like because it, it was never like that before because you could barely really ever get them into stores but with the ds like the the nintendo ds was the thing that really pushed it and i think that that sold like over 160 million units or something like that like I've I've been I've been on a a big old deep dive into the history of uh, handheld consoles recently, and I don't know why. That was on my Christmas list in 2004, and I wasn't able to get it for Christmas because it was like you said, it was a hot item. Yeah, no, like dude, the DS was insane. I think the only thing that sold better than the DS was the original Game Boy, mm. which makes sense. Well, yeah. I uh, if you're counting the entire DS family. Uh, then those, then all of those outsold uh, outsold the Game Boy. But I don't know if any individual DS model has outsold the Game Boy. Yeah, I think it's just the DS in total because I know that that like, and I'm not including like the DSi. I don't think I'm thinking like the original DSs. I think I don't know, like, like DS, like DS. Yeah, so so one one model as opposed to like the entire family. Yeah, I, I think so. Um, and like whenever it comes down to like the Switch, the Switch is considered a a, a home console and not really a it, it basically both. But I don't know if the Switch is considered a um a handheld console if that makes sense because mm -hmm. it is, but it's not. You know, <laughs> like I mean, uh, it's, it's kind of hard. Both. Yeah, it, it's like Nintendo is just so smart. They're just like you know what, frick it, let's put them both together. <laughs> I've, I've got the numbers if you want uh, for all Ooh. these because Nintendo lists these publicly. Yeah, I just I can't remember them off the top of my head. Uh, all right, as of New Year's Eve, twenty twenty one, the Switch has sold one hundred and three point five four million units. Wow, damn! The DS, which looks to include DSi, has sold one hundred and fifty four point oh two million mm -hmm. units. Switch is catching up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Frick. wow. Game That's Boy. It, those numbers are just gonna climb up every single holiday. Yeah. Inter interesting thing here. Jared was wrong. Game Boy by itself. 118.69 million. DS sold there. That is Game okay. Boy and Game Boy Color, I should clarify. If you're counting in uh, advance, it is hmm. a different story. That's okay, so, so like over overall, the Game Boy, if it was Game Boy and Game Boy Advance, like all the Game Boy line, it would have been higher than the uh the DS, correct? Yes. Okay. But then that was if the you're counting Game Boy Advance at that point, you might as well count 3DS and DS, which again changes the numbers again. Basically, yeah. But that's just that's crazy. Dude, the Switch is just... How long has the Switch been out? Five years? Uh, yes. Five years. This yes. year was five yeah. years. Bro, 100 million units in five years. What the... Fr I, I, I hope that one day I can make something that freaking successful. You know? <laughs> like, good God. <laughs> like, anything. Give me... Frick. And suddenly you turn around and the 8-bit drummer is a household name. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking uh. of games. Oh, my God. I don't want to talk too much about this because it's better experience through a playthrough. I know what you're talking about. Play Tunic! Yes. Oh my god, Play Tunic. Dude. Oh. Oh my god. Me and Erica, we 100%ed it. And 
it is some of like the only there's the, the the combat's weird but everything else the the world building the freaking puzzles everything puzzles. in it i have never experienced a game where every two minutes i was like oh of course oh frick that makes so much sense frick this game you know like that because <laughs> it, it kept it kept like tricking me and it kept challenging me to figure this crap out tunic is so freaking good man oh yep i don't want to say much more else about it because again better experience through a playthrough than than hearing someone talk about it yeah i literally everything's a spoiler <laughs> i'll play like, it someday it's the, really uh, good man trust me the way the way the game like presents story and mechanics is something i've never seen in any other video game before it's incredible yeah no nah, the presentation's fantastic it um, is so good yeah you have you have me intrigued i actually got a uh, dev key for it and i just haven't had a chance to play it yet give, give it a give it a go man you are but going I to should, love it i should try it that game's got layers dude <laughs> oh yeah oh it's freaking great it was funny tom um you were you were playing it on cast and I, I raided you and uh you were like, Hey yeah, I just got I just got through with this one part here. I think I'm pretty much almost done with it. And I'm just sitting there like rubbing my hands together like ah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you, you did have you no watch idea. Did, did you watch the uh, to the end of that stream? Uh no, I, I, I wasn't able to. I cried. Bro, yeah, that, that game got me too. Like it had a couple parts, man. It was fantastic. Ah, oh, good game, man. Good game. Play Tunic. So good. Right now, it's only on Steam and Xbox. Uh, if you have Game Pass, it's free on Game Pass. Yep. Oh, it's good. The, uh, I still have to finish an, Elden Ring. <laughs> <laughs> the Elden Ring's been out for, like, what, a month? Yeah. It, there's yeah, a lot of game there. It's also a gigantic there's game. There's a lot of game there. That I've played 160 massive. hours, and I'm nowhere near done. Holy Jesus <laughs> Christ. But you that's, played that's, more? That's split over two files, I should point out, but yeah. I think you've played more Elden Ring than I've played Guilty Gear. Also, I don't like <laughs> the game, so it's kind of scary that I've got 160 <laughs> hours clocked and I'm that far in. What the just, frick? Just imagine if you liked it, John. Oh, just man, if I liked it. it, it, it I, yeah. So I, I, should, I should rephrase that. It's not that I don't like it, uh, but I'm very conflicted as I play it. Uh, like the exploration is the best I've played in any game since like Breath of the Wild. It's fantastic. Like <laughs> I love the fact that like every corner of the damn world has something going on in it. There's hidden stuff you can find everywhere. Exploration mm. in that game is amazing. Like everything looks super fun. It's definitely my favorite part about it. Like I like meeting all these NPCs, getting their weird story beats, like looking around for them. But God, do I hate the combat. <laughs> 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 and every time I talk to someone who's like a fan of Souls, I'm like, yo, does this ever change? You're like, no. No, this is it. This is why we all play it. I'm like, oh fuck. <laughs> I ironically, that is how I felt about Tunic. I loved everything about the game uh except for the combat. The combat was the only thing that actually made me like annoyed because it's so hard um yeah. to do right. The the, because, the, the combat you know. the, the combat is is uh is souls light, I'd say. Yeah, not, very not, uh... not near not ne not nearly as many buttons to push, but um yeah, but but still like very much based around like dodge dodging, roll, do dodging and blocking and waiting for opportunities. How long you say you've been playing, John? Uh, between the two files, about 160 hours. Bro, I got 127 in Guilty Gear. Holy frick, you played that game longer <laughs> than I played Guilty Gear. So now, the, if that if that doesn't include the uh, PS4 or PS5, probably I'm matching you. But yeah, oh my god. Yeah, so we uh, like. Reese and I usually pick a game a year and then we're like, we pick a big game and go through it. Uh, and I had picked up Elden Ring on a whim because everyone was like, all right, John, we know you don't like Souls games, but mm -hmm. this is the most approachable that the series has ever been. It's getting like rave reviews. It's got like a 97 on Metacritic or something bonkers. I'm like, you should, you should try it. I'm like, okay. For I'll God's sake. For God's sake, Nintendo delayed Breath of the Wild so it wouldn't have to compete at the Game Awards. <laughs> yeah. So I, I tried it out. And I'm just like, God, why do people like this? And then like 30 hours later, I'm like, God, why do people like this? And then 60 hours later, God, why do people like this? And then 90 hours later, I'm like, fuck, I might like this. And then 120 hours later, it's like, God, why do people like this? Just keeps happening back and forth. I mean, uh, are you... <laughs> I, hate, I hate to just 
be blunt, but like, are you a quitter? Are you the type of person? That, like, <laughs> I am at sunk cost fallacy at this point. I am like, I yeah, cannot. It, I it, need oh, to finish this game. Wondering. Like at this point, is, is it just you? You've put so much time into it that you feel obligated. <laughs> <laughs> Are you like a the, quitter? Like, like the game owes you something at this point. You're like, well, <laughs> God, if I've put this much time, the game owes me by finishing itself. You know, like I'm gonna get to the end. Well, like hey, well, this is the thing. Like I said, like all the stuff around the game is phenomenal. Like literally, I understand the praise for all of that. And and I'm like, people, I ask people like, Yo, is this like this in other games? Like, yeah, like this, this is what they're all like. I'm like, that sounds mm. awesome. Now I see why everyone loves these. But what the fuck's up with the combat? <laughs> <laughs> why am i pressing steven, why am i pressing drink a potion and then it then it does it 10 seconds later the way steven said that flashed me back to the boggle episode of king of the hill <laughs> <laughs> loser you're a loser <laughs> <laughs> how are you feeling sorry for yourself <laughs> oh, i mean john God. if i told you if i told you to crack open a coke and get started yeah, that's not instant man you gotta you gotta like open that thing and <laughs> This is just this is just game realism. This is the you're, first this is the first game to take itself seriously. You're talking cola, right? Well, I'm <laughs> cracking open a G Fuel. <laughs> no, just cracking open some cocaine. You know. <laughs> Hashtag not sponsored. Uh, Wait, not sponsored uh, not, by cocaine? Yeah, no, not, no, not sponsored but could by be. not sponsored by G Fuel, Coca-Cola, or Cocaine. But could be. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I, I like hey, El, Ch El Chapo, hit us up. <laughs> <laughs> do not do not <laughs> we're, we're not free anybody I'm sorry asterisk, asterisk that is a joke do not <laughs> uh, shit I forgot what I was going to say I, I realize like a lot of the games I complain about it's because they're trying to mimic realism I'm like ah oh, crap this is why I go to games is to escape realism so that's I think that's like the thing I'm butting my head against but also I hate the animation priority on everything and I think that's the reason I don't like the combat. Yeah. But like, but like every, like I said, everything else about it is phenomenal. Like, if if I could just spend hours exploring the world, that's what I would do. But then I was like, okay, well, if I want to explore this next part, I have to go in this dungeon and fight this boss. Am I that's strong right. enough to just easily beat it? Okay, then no problem. Am I on par with it? This is gonna be miserable. Oh man! Like now, I'm just thinking of like a game that's kind of like, like the halfway point between Elden Ring and like Journey. Where like you are just kind of traversing across this land, but at the same time, in Journey, you're uh, like, as far as I recall, can tell from Journey, I haven't played it. It's absolutely silent during it. Like you, like you don't talk, and nobody else talks. Is that, am I right on that? In what? I haven't in played it. Uh, in no Journey. Journey. There's oh, Journey. there's no spoken yep. dialogue. There's so one of the cool things of Journey is that you encounter other players in the world, which I guess in some way is somewhat similar to how Elden Ring and some of the Souls games work, right? But you can communicate with them, just there's, it's not like a, under, you can't understand the language. It's just kind of like a, and that's it. I, I guess what yeah. I'm trying to say is like, is like, uh, kind of like the, the pacifism of Journey, but with like the, the world and like characters and exploration that Elden Ring has would probably be like a, a fun game in and of itself. Oh yeah. Um, or uh, maybe not game, but more like, uh, like a fun experience. Yeah, I mean, Journey has music. That's a whole like amb it's a very ambient, serene kind of game, to yeah. the point where like you don't know that the other person you're playing with is multiple people. It could be the same person the entire time. It could literally just be like every area you got swapped in with someone else. You don't know until you've beaten the game, and then the credits show you who you played with. Oh Journey, wow, Journey's what? whole thing—that's so cool. Journey's mm -hmm. whole thing is like being an experience, capital E, where like everything that's going on is designed to work with all other parts of the game to make you feel something. It's ba it's kind of like playing a movie. Mm. Not like a movie in the sense of... Uh, <laughs> not like a Telltale like, game. Yeah, not that, but like you, f you feel as if you're a part of like a cinematic experience in a way. It's, it's actually super, super cool. It's also like three hours long and everyone should play it. Oh, people they also flower. Does Abzu do Did the that? same thing, chat? Uh, yeah, Abzu is the same. I've heard Abzu is, the is pretty good. That's the same company good. that made it's Flower, too, right? Huh? That That's game company, company made Flower, yeah. right? Yeah. That's yes. literally the name, is that game company. Oh, okay. Well, mm. did they make Flower as well? Yes. Yes. They made okay. Flow and then Flower and then There's, Journey. I, think, was there, I thought there was something between Flower and Journey, but I think you're right. And then they made the Children of Light. Oh, they did Child of Light. 
Hmm. Wait, the You're... RPG Ubisoft? Not Child of Light. Oh, Children of Light? Sky Children of the sky. Light. Sky, I missed the sky part. Okay, okay. I yeah. that part out, but yes, Children of Children of Light and or no, what? Child of Light versus Children of the Light. Yeah, it's a lot of words. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like. I haven't played Child of Light, but I wanted to because it uses the same engine that uh, Rayman Origins and Rayman Legends does. Child of and Light is kills, a great game. It kills me that Ubisoft has never gone back to that engine because the Ubisoft engine is really good. Did you see that the main character of Child of Light is now playable in Bloodstained? I did not. This happened like four days ago. That is really cool. They're literally so the main one of the main gimmicks of Child of Light is about having your character kind of grow up. So they mimic that in Bloodstained. You literally can like help Aurora like get older and get more experience, so you can get around the world more. And it's it's kind of a really oh, cool. Concept. That's cool. Hmm. But can you give her a pizza sword? <laughs> I actually don't know what her cooking is. <laughs> can Maybe. you give her? Can you give her an uh, an egghead? Or a toilet. These are, these hat. are the questions we got to be asking if bloodstains. <laughs> what was that? Uh, what was Jepson's item? Oh shoot! What was Josh's? I think Emil, it was more of a Emil had the weapon. Emil had the Emil had the Olimar helmet. Yeah, because he. But these was... are these are to those who don't know these are codes you could enter into Bloodstained um, based on like creators or not creators but people who backed it uh, to get special items. Um, well, no, we didn't back it. Was like we were specifically asked to, like, yo, oh, oh, we, like, okay, we, yeah, wanted, we, we want to get a bunch of content project. creators to be clans, like, for the credits, and you all get like a gotcha. special item. Yeah, so, because uh, I remember Stephen had the Sicily slicer, which was the uh, the the pizza sword. <laughs> the Sicily slicer. I forgot yeah. what everyone else's was called, but I remember Tim had the toilet hat, Emil had the Olimar helmet, and John had the uh, the egg head. Josh yeah. was in chat. I'm surprised he hasn't. He might not. He might not remember what it is. It's been a bit. Fangamer was doing all of the like middleman work to try and figure out exactly what they should do in terms of how to approach creators. And they came to me because I know them and I'm good friends with them. And I was like, yeah, I got a list of people you could reach out to. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I gave them a bunch of names. Hmm. Well, thank you for putting us on that list because the second that the, the Steve approached me and was just like, yo, we, we were doing something with, with uh, Ega. I'm like, I'm in. Because I, yeah. out of like the whole group, I've like I've played all of his games up to that point, so I was just like, this this is a yes, this is an immediate yes. Yeah, when they were like, do you know people that you know would be interested? I was like, yeah, I think I, I think I could come up with a list for you, people that would like to do this. Let me see, because yeah, there's a there's a bunch of these in here. Uh, there's uh, the bullfighter, which gives you a mask of uh, a Baz. I don't know what game Baz is from. I just know him from Shovel Knight. Well, Baz is a thing from um, uh, Super Best Friends Zaibatsu. Uh But he is in Dive Kick. He's in Shovel Knight. And I is it the Takeover? He's also in. He's in a couple different games. Well, there's a, there's a helmet for him and a well, a mask for him in a, in Bloodstained. Yeah. Um, all these are based on like I think what you name your uh, save file. At the beginning, yeah, you only get to have one in your save file, which is annoying. Yeah. I would love to have like the egg helmet and the Sicilian slicer. Ah, okay. Jepson had a uh, if you, it, Jepson's was the clockwork blade. Okay, so he did have a clock one. That's what I thought. Yeah. So Steve, I, is, I, I took a gamble when they said we got to pick an item. I'm like, I wonder if the actual like armor will actually show up in cutscenes. So that is specifically why I picked the egg to be a helmet and then when they said yes they will show up in cutscenes i'm like this is perfect and then <laughs> playing through that game with the egg helmet on a voice changer that you can pick up in the game and squeaky shoes became our what we call the cutscene ruiner so we would always like <laughs> walk into every cutscene, shoes squeaking everywhere with a high-pitched voice and this just like egg with sunglasses and like a quaffed hair just staring at whatever monster we're fighting it was amazing it was that was my favorite thing of the playthrough we did i like how a lot of these are like just the the uh the um people's names as their uh as like their their code for this so it's like chugga conroy eagle raptor uh tim's with the toilet hat is called in the bathroom yeah perfect yeah we got to name our own codes 
Hmm. But the default option, obviously, was just to use the the names, the channel names. And if we didn't respond in time, I think Steve said they were going to just use the channel names. Ah, uh, because I know yours I know John. Emil. Yours is, yours, is, yours is Egg Farm. Mine's Egg Farm. Yeah, uh, I know Emil specifically put Olimar's helmet in because he, at the time, was about to do a Pikmin game, or I was planning to do like the next one, and he was going to have it in as a teaser. But he didn't realize how long the game development was going to be because i think he thought it was going to be out in like a year and then it or maybe two and then it was like what four or five years it took a while to come out yeah it was a long time yeah game development (laughs) it takes a a while i've actually never played bloodstained it's fun uh, do you have you played any of the metroidvania castlevanias like symphony of the night uh aria no no the um they they've never really uh, stuck out to me for that. It's not my style of gameplay for some reason. I don't know why. Do you like Metroidvanias at all, or just? I like them every now and then, but it's it has to be something like super special for me. I guess I don't know. I mean that's fair. It's it's become my favorite genre, so that's probably why I'm yeah. just always so gung ho for it. Like like Erica is the Metroid player. Like she adored Dread. Um, and but I haven't I haven't even I never touched. I'm not, the only the only Metroid game I've ever played was Fusion. Um, but whenever it comes to Castlevania, I've never actually played a Castlevania game, I don't think. Not that I can remember, at least. Yeah, well, like I, I said, love... there's like two different types of them. So there's the classic and then there's Metroidvania. And they're, yeah. very, they're very different between the two. I mm-hmm. love that Dread added two modes of take it easy mode or... You hate You're yourself dead. mode. You're freaking Dude, dead mode. <laughs> I, I love that they led with that. The biggest complaint people had for Dread was the game is hard. So when they like, we've got an update coming out. We've made the game harder. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and we it made once. it easier. Have, have fun. <laughs> this is what your complaining gets you. <laughs> One hit mode. Good Lord. Yeah. Dread mode. Literally dread mode. Dread mode. I remember... <laughs> God, this this clip is probably still floating around somewhere. When I was streaming uh, Metroid Dread, there's one bit where there was one bit where like uh, um, I misjudged how the game like uh, rendered things, and uh, I had shot off the face mask of one of the uh, the Emmys, and like I was I was aiming at the door that I thought it was going to come through because I saw it open, but I didn't see anything come through, so I'm like, oh. It just hasn't loaded in yet. I guess I'll I'll wait for it to like come out, and then suddenly it pops over the ledge that I'm right next to and just gets me, and I scream bloody murder. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the Emmys made that game so awesome. Like, yeah. oh, man, they were I I wish I had enjoyed them as much as you guys did. Oh man, like watching watching Erica encounter the Emmy for the first time, and she was like freaking out. Um, we were we were actually over at uh, Jules's place, so me Dell, and her were playing it together and she was just like ah <laughs> the entire time because like it got her too and like that freaking that death animation the one hit is just like so brutal it's very visceral yeah like oh, yeah. i was just like i was like good god <laughs> this is a nintendo game what the frick no i i hated the emmys they were just so boring like because once you figure out how to dodge them it just becomes like oh just jumping around them like they weren't a threat they were just a nuisance yeah but no, like, I, that, I can, that was the thing they fell that. in the two camps you either were like freaked out by them and actually felt dread or you i guess you felt both types of dread the dread of like oh god they're gonna get me and the dread of like oh jesus here we go again. <laughs> yeah, dread of like i gotta deal with this crap again <laughs> i never Bless i never you. played metroid dread but i whenever it had come out and everyone was talking about it and i I seen some of the gameplay footage i really like the concept of them particularly because i really love when there's just a hint of horror in games, because if you advertise something as like a horror game, there's so many people that just won't touch it. Mm-hmm. But I want, this will just sound weird. I want more people to experience horror elements just as a concept because people seem to be so averse to it. Yeah. And if you can just like, just get just a little bit in there, just like sneak it in. And people are like, oh, I'm playing the Metroid game. Whoop, I got scared, peed a little. Like, that's great. I think, I think there should be more of that in society. <laughs> I, I agree with that 100%. I think, uh, honestly, I think that's why I love Kirby games so much. Like, because the, the there's always a character that turns into an eldritch god in that <laughs> freaking game. Like, it just doesn't matter which one you're playing. There's always something that is a little bit disturbing. 
every single one of them. And Except I think that's for, like, why I love the first Kirby. game. There it is. Yeah. After the first game. Cause like the first game was like, Oh, King Diddy, <laughs> you know, there's a, there's a meme that's floating around of, uh, of it's Peter Griffith sitting on a chair. <laughs> and I think it describes Kirby games, uh, succinctly. Ah, oh, sweet man-made horrors beyond my comprehension. <laughs> yeah. <I've seen> that. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Speaking of, um, have y'all, have y'all played forgotten land? No, because oh, I'm stuck seen. playing Elden Ring. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I, of, course, of course, of course you have, because you're stuck in freaking Elden Ring. Um, but yeah, like, Ma Mao and I are taking turns. We've been streaming it. We we have to take turns because there's not two Kirby's, and band. That's my. That's like my one hang up about the game is that player two is Bandana Waddle D. What's wrong with Bandana D? But it's boring because you don't get all the abilities. So you got to you got to take fair. turns. That is fair. I but, just don't. Um, want, why can't they but, just but, put in yellow? But Steven, you have the meme. You have to be Waddle Dee. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell y'all though, man. The one, the like, I love the game. Like the the character designs are absolutely adorable. I freaking love it. The final boss is awesome as well. I'm not gonna spoil it, but like. The thing that got me the most was the freaking music in this game, dude. Oh the my god. The music in this game is on par with freaking Origami King for me. Yep. And I'm oh, like, it is let's incredible. go. They like, they they lemotif out the ass, but like but yeah. like they, but it's still really good music. There there's a song for the level um Battle on the Frozen Bridge. That is a six four yes! jazz epic. And I freaking love it dude oh my god and then um then you got uh roar of ddd like ddd's main battle theme holy frick that man. one's good too i got god goosebumps damn. thinking about this I, I actually have goosebumps <laughs> right now like that music the music in the game is so good the opening theme is fantastic running wild um i can't remember the exact name it's like welcome to the new world but the uh the chorus is running wild and i'm just like oh wow also eflin is freaking adorable and I want, I need to learn how to draw him. <laughs> I love <laughs> Ethelin so much. There was, uh, there's, there's a feel like the, have you played any of the mini games in it? The mini Anybody games? who's played it? Uh, uh, we've played the Out to Lunch. Oh, yeah, yeah. Those are all fun. Have you played the Tilt Puzzle? Yep. No. That, uh, you're going to need a steady, uh, like a steady, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Like hand a steady surf, a, a steady surface to uh to rest upon to beat that one i mean well i kind i'm not trying to show off but i kind of one shot it honestly Let's go, Jared. <laughs> here's the thing like here's the thing i i did it really fast too but i had my desk in front of me no, that, like uh, I, I had my desk in front of me like rest my hand upon and be like okay i could do this and like main thing too piece of advice for that one use the use the use the uh the tilt control reset Yes, that'll yes, save you a lot of time. Yeah, it is. It is torture without that. But like, uh, what you do is like, if you if you think you're gonna like freak up if you're going on a long a long area, you you really quickly just press X and then it goes back to normal and then you just turn to the left and it it really works. It, it, yep. It's on one map that I had to use that a lot. It was like on the uh, the hard map, um, like the super hard map because I was just like, okay, this is actually kind of ridiculous. Yeah, but yeah. like. I remember back in uh, elementary school, they, there was a game that was like a, a, a basically it was that game. It was like a little rollerball marble game where you had to like use the um, the up, down, left, and right controls to move it around. And I freaking love that stuff, man. The rollerball like puzzles. Oh, there's that a, there's a name favorite. for that thing. Labyrinth. I can't remember. Labyrinth. Labyrinth. Yes, it. thank you. I love labyrinth so much. I actually had a I had that on uh, iPod Touch back in the day too. Wow. Yeah, because it had a it had like a tilt control thing, and that was super fun. Ooh, Marble Madness. That's another good game. Oh, that's hard though. <laughs> there's, a, there's, a few, there's a few good like marble games that have come out recently as well. Have y'all tried Marble Blast? I haven't. That was that was one of the ones I was thinking of. I played. I think uh, I think part of the reason I did so well at that is because I played a lot of Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania when that came out. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, if you were good at those, then easy, easy peasy. Dude. Marble Blast, dude, I put so many hours into that game. I never beat it 100% because some of the levels were stupid. Like, Schroedenfreude can just eat my behind. Yeah. <laughs> I hate that level. <laughs> oh, I thought I think about the concept of Schroedenfreude in general. Oh, no, there's a level called Schroedenfreude, and it is okay. the worst level in the entire game. It's like four minutes long, and you can't frick it up. Oh, I hate that game. <laughs> I hate that level. <laughs> just hate. Just hate. Hate. 
Hey. Banana, banana Mania is a... Uh... <laughs> It's gonna sound ridiculous. Dark banana mode gave me a lot of trouble. <laughs> Basically, it's, it's the same levels that you played in, except all the um, the bananas are arranged differently, and they're quote unquote dark bananas. And if you touch one, you lose the level. Oh man! No. I've actually never played a Super Monkey Ball game. I should give it a try. You would like them is, if you uh, liked uh, uh, Marble Blast. Yeah, yeah. But anime, but anime is a good start up to that uh, because going from the older the older ones are good as well, very tight controls, but the problem is going from the older ones to the newer ones, the physics change a little bit, so it's it is just enough to be ah. like to be like really, really difficult to get a handle on. But Banana Mania has all the old levels, so it's yeah, Banana so, Mania like, is basically the greatest well. hits. Yep. The only plus, um plus it has one of the happiest theme songs I've ever heard. <laughs> the only uh Super Monkey Ball game I've ever played was actually in an arcade. Like they have like a monkey ball arcade where you roll the ball to yeah. control it, and that that was oh, actually pretty fun. That was that you, was how the see, game started. Yeah. You, so you had the one where you, where it was like the the trackball that you had to roll in order to like roll the ball, right? Yeah, it was like a gigantic trackball too. It was like a, a bowling ball. It, there was, it, a, <laughs> there was, I think, it was the super super monkey ball arcade game that had the banana shaped joystick, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that thing controls really <laughs> jank. They had ooh, one of those ooh. at Magfest. <laughs> they, they they had one of those at Magfest one year, and it was impossible to control that to control, uh, to control that. Is that, is that a banana joystick in your pocket, or are you just playing Super Monkey Ball? I'm uh, like, okay, uh, like uh, just imagine, like just imagine like a joystick, like an arcade game, but replaced with a banana. That's uh, essentially what the joystick was. <laughs> Potassium. Tom, have you ever played any of the Monkey Balls for Wii that use the the balance board? The balance? No. Dude, yeah, what? Banana Blitz, I think, or Banana Mania. I Blitz forget. or Blast? Mania, Mania is on. the one that I just came out. To be right next to what, what was, them, let what me was check. the first Switch <laughs> one? What was the first Switch Monkey Ball? Because that was a remake banana, of the Wii one. Banana Blitz, I think. That's banana the remake Blitz. of the Wii one. The, re, the Wii one uses the balance board. There's oh, there's cool. two Wii ones. Oh, Step and Roll. That's the other one. Thanks, Chad. Step and Roll is the one step that uses Step and Roll is the balance yeah, board. Yeah, it's okay. Step and Roll. Wow, okay. Yeah, if you're a big Monkey Ball fan, um, especially if, you, if you're pretty good at them, I think it's time to move on up to that game. Become to um, the step stage. up my game, yeah, yeah. Be become the ball. Be did, the did, ball. Did any of y'all do We Fit whenever it came out? Oh yeah, yeah. I had yeah. streams of that. Oh cool. Okay, I was about to say because like that—that that was one of my favorite things on the Wii was the We Fit. I Tom, love that. Crap. Tom's yoga I, pants like, were infamous. Yep. <laughs> the uh, the Tom Yoga emote lives to this day. It's just a it's just a pink butt they, they, that's showing up in chat right now. <laughs> that's Tom's butt right I, there. I still hey, have that's those. a butt to be I, proud I, of. I still have those yoga pants. That's good. But like the what Wii I would balance. do for those streams, what I would do for those uh, those Wii Fit streams is I would like, the way my office was set up, there, I didn't have like any equipment to like mount a camera, especially like a webcam. Hmm. So like I opened the door to my office slightly and then t tuck the camera like up onto the door and just had it aimed down at there and just like made sure the door didn't move that much or I, or God forbid I bump into it. And uh, it would just be, it would just be looking down at pretty much my entire office and I'd do those, uh, those, uh, um, we fit. Uh, I think it was we fit. We fit you. you. Yeah. The uh, the yeah. tailoring game. We fit you. Um, uh, th those would be my streams, dude. I <laughs> there's something to be said for jank webcam setups, man. Like, like freaking taping that sucker to a wall in order to make it work correctly, <laughs> man. Goodness. Like I, I like whenever I first started streaming, I I had a um, a tripod. That was like ten dollars. <laughs> like, like that sucker was falling apart. Like uh, I was able to put a C920 on it. If I put anything heavier on it, it would just collapse. Like it was <laughs> so jank. Um, but I had gotten it from uh, at Best Buy whenever I had my discount. I actually got it for uh, like seventy cents, I think, because it was like um, one of the in-store models. But it was so <laughs> freaking bad. So like I used to have to like um, me and duct tape or best friends whenever it comes to streaming. <laughs> there's a lot of duct tape on that old drum kit I used to have too. But man, there ain't nothing, nothing better than freaking like, yeah, I got this working. And then it falls off the next thing. You have to redo it again. <laughs> what? uh? <laughs> no, I lost my train of thought. Never mind. <laughs> there's, there's definitely nothing wrong with having, I guess for, for lack of a better term, jank setups with things. Um, largely because like that to a degree that's that's kind of what like filmmaking is and like f the, the <laughs> filmmaking industry is there there's just entire jobs that revolve around 
getting things to attach to other things. And sometimes <laughs> there's a official, in big air quotes, ways of doing it, but usually there's not. Oh, yeah. It's just clamps. Just everything is clamped together. So, <laughs> you know, if you're clamping weird stuff together at home, you know, you're basically a filmmaker. You're fine. When I started streaming, I don't know what brought this on, but when I first started streaming, the capture card I had was not zero delay. Oh, so fun. I would say things and then they would happen on the screen. <laughs> Got to find the um, uh, the delay feature in the audio mixer on freaking yeah. OBS for that. So I'm trying. I I knew nothing. I think I was using XSplit at the time. Honestly, Bro. I think I, I think I bought a subscription to XSplit for that. And no, I didn't buy a subscription. I was using the free version. But like, and I did. I had no idea how to do any of that. But I remember like my earliest streams. One of my earliest highlight videos uh, on my channel is me playing the uh, F Zero game in Nintendo Land and singing along with uh, with Big Blue. But it's off time, <laughs> dude. And then, and then later. I found out about a program. It was like twenty bucks called uh, called Virtual Audio Cable, and I would just like run my audio. Uh, I'm trying to think of like remember how it looked like. I would just run my audio devices through that, and, like add delays and remove delays, and like God forbid I had anybody on uh, on Cocom because <laughs> I would have to delay my own mic. But because uh, my capture card was running through my desktop audio, just like my I guess it was Skype at the time. Um, the opposite would happen then where my voice would be on time with what was happening in the game, but the people I was talking to would be speaking before anything I'd be saying. Oh, frick. I mean, just, Jeez. just in general, um, faster speeds for like our devices, like getting, getting away from USB 2.0 and moving into USB 3.0 and having more bandwidth has enabled Godsend. a lot of things to be not a headache. Yeah. So that's good. Uh, Absolute <laughs> so actually, like, one of the things that I got um, in January, and I, I actually have a vlog coming about coming out about this uh, tomorrow. Um, I bought a uh, capture card that is it's a Blackmagic capture card, and it's it's PCIe, and it just has four HDMI inputs. And I did that because when we had started doing um, Pokemon. Me and Mao are playing Pokemon, so we're each playing our own copy of the game, which is on screen, and also our camera is on screen. So we're recording all of this stuff, and we had all of these various USB capture devices hooked up, and we were running out of bandwidth. Like, we, we didn't have any more USB bandwidth to, to spare, and we were running into weird problems. And finally, I was like, man, I'm just going to bite the bullet and get this, this capture device. And it's just so nice that these products exist because you can run everything into them and then you have one device that takes in all of this stuff at once and you don't have to think about it. As opposed to what I did uh, for my Pokemon race back in like 2014 or something like that where I had one of us on... God, I, I don't think I had a Game Boy Player disc at that time. I don't know what I was running that through. But one of us was playing on official hardware and the other one was playing through emulator. And my just, like, um, capture both of those. My uh, my drum streams had a visual delay until 2019. <laughs> wow. There there was a delay on my on my stream for the longest time because I didn't know how to fix it, and um, I'm pretty sure I told the story um, on disc only before about how Andy Jassy, the freaking CEO of Amazon. <laughs> uh, got in touch with a uh, a Twitch staff member to get in touch with me and say, Hey, let's fix your uh, audio. <laughs> <laughs> Cause apparently like he was watching the stream and he was like, Oh, this has a delay. We can fix this here. <laughs> and then I get, I get a message from uh, one of my staff buddies and they're like, Hey, uh, Andy Jassy wants me to fix your stream audio delay. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> cool. <laughs> Like I, I, I can't have remember. enough corporate power to interfere with this. Yeah, like it was so <laughs> funny too because he was like, "Yeah, we have tools for this, but like you know, we never really let people know because nobody really needs it <laughs> until then." So it was just really cool that freaking like Andy Jassy was like, "Hey, I like this guy's stuff, and I bet it could look even better. So let's fix it." And I'm like, "That's really kind. Thank you." Um, 
but yeah, I, I don't I don't remember if I told the story or not, but I did. I know I told the story about the freaking Stepmania X guy. <laughs> I know I've told that story, chat. You don't have to remind you me. You want to tell it you've again? T- you want to tell it again? I've told it three times. <laughs> I remember you've I remember you've told me this. Uh, at least I I remember hearing the story about the uh, about about the Amazon guy. Uh, but I don't think I've heard the Stepmania story. <laughs> you definitely have. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, one day, no, I'm not even going to do that. I got, I got made fun of for that. And they're like, Haha, we thought that Steven was the granddad. And I'm like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> one of the, one of the things that I think I like most about streaming and, and having moved into streaming and started to do a lot more of that in the past few years is that it feels like a crossroads between um, entertainment and technology Mm-hmm. In in a way that like obviously whenever you're doing pre recorded content like you're dealing with all sorts of different cameras and tech and stuff too but with live streaming it's it's that but it's there's even more to it and I love that side of it and it's very fun for me to like ooh what what piece of equipment are we going to hook up to do this how are we supposed to do this thing that mm. p- that part is as fun for me as just being on camera and saying poop or whatever it is I'm doing. <laughs> Uh, so like I I kind of equate like I I, I, I I for some reason juggling came to mind like YouTube is basically like you have as many attempts as you want to get juggling down right and show your audience whereas streaming is you have to keep up that juggling the entire time. I think that's the most yeah. fun thing about streaming for me too is like having it go the entire time, being live, having it done yep. right because like I I don't like being a studio musician. I do not like recording. I can do it, but I get nervous. I frick up takes and I'm just like, oh, you know, like, well, here here we go. Here's the 15th try of doing this while on stream. If I drop like a couple of beats, I'm like, oh, whatever. And I just get back into it. You know, I can play it off or, you know, whatever. But like that is um, that's one of my favorite things about streaming is the live aspect. Like, hey, we're just getting it done right now. And whatever happens, happens. Yeah, there, there's definitely a pressure to make sure you have it right ahead of time because you can't fix it in post. Yeah, but exactly. But inversely, then it's done. Yeah. Which is also very nice. That is fair. Also, <laughs> I, oh, go ahead. also like, like, it, like when you drop like like beats and, and whatnot, like when you're live or, or, or even like on a game sense, if you screw up in a game, then it's just like there's a more human aspect to that. Like, the, like the, they're they're getting like they're getting like the raw interaction with you and, and like what you what you do and what you like to do. Yeah, no, it, it's it's so fun. Like the live the live aspect of it is just my favorite thing. Um, and <laughs> it's really funny. Uh, I get people asking me. It's like, hey, um, what? Like they they'll ask me like, how do I how do I get into doing gigs? Like drum gigs or like guitar gigs? How do I get gigs and stuff like that? I'm like, I'm so bad at getting gigs that I freaking had to go online in order to make a living. All right. Like I <laughs> suck at finding like that type of thing. I am, I am so bad at it. I had to create a new type of gig that I can do for my dad's garage because I'm that bad at it. Um, I've never been good at finding the, the places to play. So I made my own place to play and it's that, uh, what is it? That ingenuity that like, figuring out the new thing in order to fix a problem that doesn't technically exist, but it exists for you specifically. It's like, I need to find a way to be able to get my drumming out there. I don't want to do, um, I don't want to do like at, uh, I don't want to do, what is it? Like drumming at like bars and stuff like that. Nothing's wrong with that. It's just not my gig. Um, but I want to do something that I can share kind of worldwide and Twitch and YouTube is the way that I've been able to do that. I think what adds a a nice element to particularly what you do, Jared, is like. Usually when you see like people like drumming or like playing an instrument, like there's like there's like there's like intense focus, like there's not I I don't know, like maybe maybe it's different depending on like like different like I I don't know what concerts I've been to. Mm-hmm. You seem to have significantly more fun than most music music <laughs> I've seen. So <laughs> it's funny that you say that because like um, uh, I'll get people coming and they're like, "Wow, you're um, you're like the best drummer I've ever seen." I'm like, I can't say that I'm the best drummer, but I can definitely say that I have the most fun. Like <laughs> at least in my own uh, own opinion. And in that cause... regard, yes, I am the best drummer. <laughs> but no, like I um I am all about the showmanship. Like I I like 
Yeah, I'm a, you know, I'm I can keep a beat. I'm a decent drummer. I can do a couple things. I can blast beat every now and then. But I am so much more about the interaction and the showmanship rather than technical prowess. Like I can I can make my way around a drum set, but I can't sound like like somebody who is insanely like he's a really good streamer too. Uh somebody who's insanely good at um the technical side of drumming things is 66 Samus. Like he can he can do stuff that I can only dream of, right? But the thing is, I don't want to get to that point because I'd have to put a lot of practice in, right? Uh, my practice is the streams itself. So I utilize that time in order to be more so, uh, what was it, like an entertainer rather than a um, technical musician. But like, if y'all haven't like seen 66 Samus play the drums, he's freaking ridiculous. He's one of the quickest drummers I've ever seen in my life, man. He's so good. I can't really speak for uh, any of uh, like anybody here except for myself, but like, I haven't gotten it a lot recently. But I used to get like a lot of uh, a lot of like messages about like, oh, how does one like get into content creation and whatnot? I got into it when it wasn't even a job, so like I can't even tell. I, like, <laughs> there's it's, the landscape has changed so much that like there's zero advice that I can give you that be relevant now. Like. I guess the thing that I would say to people wanting to get into streaming is give it a try. Just period. Just give it a try. If, if, if it fails, so be it. If it makes it, then so freaking be it, you know? Like, just have fun with it and, um, like, treat it as a hobby first, yeah. you know? Like, I, I always tell people, don't go into it expecting to make money. You're yeah, like, I, especially if you go, if you go hard into it, then yeah. you're going to be losing money and probably will never make that back. Like at, at the beginning, for sure, because I mean, if you want to get equipment and stuff like that, but like w w another thing uh, on the on the opposite side of that is like, don't be afraid to monetize, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't be afraid because your entertainment value is worth it. You know, like that's the thing. Like I get a lot of people that like, I don't want to add a, uh, a donation button to my or a tip button to my stream or I don't even want to do affiliate because I'll feel like I'm all about the money. It's like, don't be afraid to be supported for what you're doing, you know? Yep. Like that's, that's one thing. It's like, um, there, there's a, a bunch of, there's, there's a couple of artists that I've commissioned where they're just like, they, you know, they undercharge and I'm like, why <laughs> I make sure to make it up for like in a tip or something because their work is worth it. Your work is worth it. And the mm -hmm. entertainment that you provide in this crazy world that we live in is worth it. Like it's just, you know, don't be afraid to monetize, but don't make that what you're all about, right? It's like, oh, yeah. I'm not going to start streaming unless I get a hundred subs. It's like, no, you can't do that. But oh God, there was, I'm not going to name him just because I don't want to give him credit. But like, uh, there was this one guy who would be like, unless I get this amount of money in donations and subs, I'm ending the stream in a half hour. <laughs> well, I mean, that's kind of, it's, it's kind of like what I did though with the, uh, the anti subathon, but <laughs> in a more fun though. way. Yeah, that was a, that was an April Fool's joke, but <laughs> like I was gonna play regardless. But the thing is, is like uh, something that I, I I really want people to know is that it's okay to be supported. It's okay yep. to make money doing this, and people shouldn't expect anything special for if you do support somebody, right? Like that that's the other side of the coin. It's like, oh, if I give this guy something, I'm gonna expect something. No, don't do that. Support because you enjoy the content, and that is it. You know when. <laughs> I remember like back in the old days when this was just when like content creation was really just starting to take off. Some of my friends would uh would like <laughs> some of my friends and, and this is like when when like I was in college and a bunch of the people I was uh working with were either like still in high school or like graduated from college. Um some of them were like starting to make money and then like their parents would find out and be like, Well give it back. <laughs> 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 oh man. <laughs> content creation's been a trip man i and i i think i'm the baby of the group as as we have established like i've only been doing it for seven years and i think my my one of my favorite moments about like from it is whenever i told my dad that like you know after i was doing it for a little while and i got like partnered and uh, i was like duff i made this much in a month and he just freaking his jaw drops he's like excuse me because <laughs> Like, you know, he always, he was always like, yo, you got to work a regular job and do this and like build yourself up. Like, um, he wanted me to do my own thing and like, you know, run my own business and stuff, but he didn't see the drumming thing as like something that could go crazy. And then yeah. 
after a little while, he's like, keep doing the drumming thing. Buy me a shirt, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like uh, that was, that was just, um, that is one thing I'm really, really happy about is that because of doing this, I, you know, my parents don't have to worry about me. Like I'm going to be just fine. You know, your, your dad seems like the kind of dad where it's like, like, a like now, like, a if, if you were like doing concerts, he would be front and center of every concert concert wearing wearing like the latest piece of merch that you had screaming louder than anybody else like in the crowd that would be my mom actually. your mom okay yeah well, my, e my mom either way your dad seems really supportive of you oh yeah no they, they both are they both are like my my dad's a little bit um like i've, I've told y'all stories about duff and how <laughs> crazy he is um but my mom literally only wears my shirts and that is the wow. sweetest thing oh, in the world wow yeah, dude, hmm. she she is always wear unless she's like dressing up or something. Like she's always wearing an eight bit drummer shirt, and like it ma it just makes me happy. I'm so glad. I gotta like they're starting to wear out. I gotta get her some more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love my parents, man. They good. Yeah, I don't. My mom and dad are still somewhat confused about what I do. <laughs> like I'm just like I can't explain anything to you mom I like I have a, a blonde wig on my desk right yeah. now and if I had to explain to everything John, attached to that John, it would I'm somewhat long. confused about what you do <laughs> so <laughs> my parents my, my parents don't get exactly what I do on the front end but they've both owned their own businesses so like they've yeah. they give me like all of the business advice and, and I'm just like thank you thank <laughs> you oh my god how do you do taxes <laughs> so funny, funny thing about Erica's parents, um, her mom watches the beginning of every single one of my streams. Like she's always like, Oh, it's four, it's four 30. It's time. It's time for Jared to go live. I'm, I'm, I'll be back. Cause she likes watching the beginning whenever I'm just talking and stuff. And like, she doesn't really stick around for the, uh, the music stuff, but it's always really fun at the beginning. But her dad has no idea like what it is, how I make a living doing what I'm doing. And I remember, and I can't remember if I've told this story or not, but the first time that I ever went and hung out with Erica's parents, we met up at a restaurant. This is the first time I've ever met him. Her dad is just like, so what was up with the maid outfit? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, you have to lead with that? Okay, well, I guess we're getting that out of the way, like, quickly. I'm fine with that. But, um, but yeah, like, both, both mine and erica's parents love the stream and every time i go and visit it, it, her dad's always like i still have no idea how you do what you do but i'm glad that you do it and i'm like me too <laughs> <laughs> have, have any of you have, have any of you ever got sick of of uh, of explaining what it is you do for a living so you just uh so you just lead with i'm a whore <laughs> erica <laughs> likes erica likes the uh the saying i'm an online male entertainer but then i have to like specify exactly <laughs> what type. <laughs> um, what what you do? What what I do is I just pull out my phone and show them a YouTube video. It's like, okay, here's the stream. This is the chat. This is where you, the bits are at. You know, like that. Yeah. Like that is how I have to show it off. And I I bang on drum. People give me five dollars for funny pictures in chat. They give me bits to for various things and and to support me and also make ad revenue on YouTube. Yes, I t I tend to tell people as little as humanly possible because it it it's like a never-ending hole of trying to explain <laughs> and it's just not worth anyone's time so when people are like and what is it that you and your wife do i'm just like i could either say well we uh you know we we run our own business or if the, i'm worried that they're gonna ask more questions i might say oh i'm i i'm a video editor and my wife's a painter and then of course Hopefully that's it, but sometimes there's <laughs> there's more questions. Oh, what do you paint? Landscapes. Oh, that's nice. And you're a video editor? Mm-hmm. What do you edit? I edit things. Weddings. For the okay. <laughs> weddings. I I I edit weddings. <laughs> See, you know, you can just at this. It's at the point where you can just say YouTuber. I stream games. <laughs> like I like for the longest time, I told people like I yell at video games, and for some pe reason, people like that. That was what I told people for I mean, the longest time, but then like it just became easier to say, I ah, just I do YouTube stuff. I mean, if if you are so fortunate to talk to someone that understands what that means. In and this I know that day and age, I feel like John, I've met mm, so yeah, no. <laughs> it, it really depends on who you're talking I, this, to. This, I, this I, is I the problem. Like I live in a different country than you guys. This is the problem. It, it, I, uh, for Americans, it's it is going to get easier and easier to explain what we do as time goes on. 
but we're still kind of in that era where it's like I'm a YouTuber, and then and the first thing that comes to mind is like, oh, so you make prank videos or something, and you have to stop right there and be like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Yeah, I just say, like, I play drums on the internet, and then that intrigues them. And then I show them a YouTube video, and they're like, oh, this is cool. You know, like, that's all you really get. Because explaining explaining what Twitch is to somebody who's, like, <laughs> I usually go, do you know what Twitch.tv is? And they're like, no. I'm like, do you know who Ninja is? <laughs> and, yeah. and they're like, oh, I've heard of him. I'm like, yeah, I do the same. I do, like, stuff on the same thing as he does, but I play drums. And then I just show them, you know. I, I, I usually don't lead with that anymore, but that was a very easy thing whenever he was in, like, the limelight. But I mean, if, um, if people yeah. have kids, it's different. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Oh, yeah. If they have children, their children want to be a YouTuber. That's like yeah. they, an influencer is their new mm-hmm. That is goal. the number one like job that kids want. Yeah. So you can I, just be like, whatever your kid wants to do, that's what I do. I, I but feel generally, so bad. I'm not, talking to, <laughs> I'm not talking to people with kids. I'm talking to people with grandkids. So Wow, I, you're an astronaut and a firefighter? <laughs> explaining explaining the vtuber avatar is kind of fun too because they're like how did the how in the frick does this work so and then i just i pull it up on my phone and i'm like here take a look and they start blinking and they freak out <laughs> yeah. they're like, oh, oh my god like it, i you showed know. a I showed a bunch of people at a at, at Coliseum the iPhone version of VTube Studio, and it was like it was it was what I was showing you guys before with the weird like gray mask that was over my face. Yeah, yeah. And that I, like, I, I think uh, I think I specifically showed it to Steven, and uh, I can't, your reaction was something along the lines of "I don't like this." Uh, in fairness, I did not like that. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? Fair. <laughs> Response think, was warranted. I think the <laughs> easiest answer to that question is we're entertainers. Uh, that's very yep. that's very true. Uh, somebody in chat said that Batman or I'm not Batman. Sorry, <laughs> specifically I'm not Batman. Sorry. <laughs> oh, the the, um, u- the username I'm not Batman. Yeah, sorry. So because right now it just sounded like you had an episode where you're confused whether or not you were Batman. You know, I'm listen, Batman. I'm Batman. <laughs> oh God. Oh my god. We went from we went from freaking Walmart tier list to talking about like everything today. We've had it's been a good it's, day. It's a normal podcast, <laughs> what <you>? baby. <laughs> hey, what do you uh what do you yeah. so you're an entertainer? What is it exactly you do? <sighs> Kids' birthday parties. <laughs> I'm Batman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Man, Spider-Man. My uh my nephews, they want to start a YouTube channel. Oh. They're eight. Yep. So my sister keeps texting me like, how do I do this? What do I do this? <laughs> like they want to, they want to say this name. They want to do this. Like I want comments on, I want all this. And they're just like, just, just wait till I show up. Just wait till I come over to the house and I'll just set it up for you. <laughs> the other thing too is like any, any content with kids and any kids content in general is under like massive scrutiny as well, just because of all the sick people on the internet. Yeah. yeah. So like so even if they were to put something out, like there is no guarantee that their comments would stay on just because of everything that happens. Just, Which is for the better general, honestly. Like yeah. A, a, as someone that d- does not have children and is is not planning on having children, <laughs> um the I don't know how any I, I just want to like give an, a round of applause to all parents that are raising children in today's age cuz it seems really hard. Mm. Just remarkably difficult. When you've got an eight-year-old that's like, I want to do all this stuff online. I'm like, but how? How? Like, this all seems really difficult. Like, if you're consider, going to put stuff online. Consider how ingrained it, it was in us where it's like, careful what pictures you post on the internet. Don't tell anybody any, uh, any like, like, you know, any information. And now we use our phones to get into strangers' cars. I mean, <laughs> so like... The internet, the internet has changed, right? Like, I grew up in an age of message boards. And that is so different from how the internet works now. The the anonymity of the internet age is it's it's changed. Yep. Um, it's still there, it, but it's like but it's changed significantly. Yeah, yeah. It's it's not generally how things go. Um, you know what kids want to do is they they want to make the the TikToks, or I should say the talk times the talk times, and they want to <laughs> dance and and show their face. But you know they're eight, so it's. I don't know. It's one of those things that I'm actually I'm very grateful that I don't have to solve because I'm like, oh my god, I, if I had a kid, I don't know what I would do. It's this all seems very difficult to 
like navigate. I, that, I like, have it'd such be the kind of thing, It'd be the kind of thing where it's like, all right, well, you could have like your friends following like your TikTok and whatnot, but if and if it's like and like depending on how big the school is, you go to like people they could be doing like like follows for follows with like with with each other like like all day long but then the parents gotta i think a parent should step in and be like if you get more than this amount of followers you're done <laughs> i don't like yeah, i don't want you going any further idea. than this I, yeah. I think i think the bigger thing is that for for children like they're constantly they're constantly changing and they're constantly becoming aware of their previous actions right so like mm -hmm. an eight-year-old when they're nine may very well look back on everything they made when they were eight and be like oh no and be, like just huge embarrassment yeah i feel like i feel like a child that's doing like youtube stuff would just continually be wanting to just start over which is fine and like i think exploring art is really powerful and the fact that everyone's got a camera in their pocket is incredible and that's amazing i just i do not know how parents do it in regards to all of the things that have changed since we were kids. Here's the thing, like, like video video production and stuff like that is like one of the best ways to kind of figure out who you are. Like doing like videos and stuff like that lets you find what part of you you don't usually use and kind of just see that aspect of yourself come out. Like as a kid, I used to like record like cassette tapes and VHS tapes of like just doing silly things with like a camera or whatever, like, and then this just turned into a thing, like, eventually. Like, it's just the thing. I think this is a normal thing for kids to do, but because of the nature of how the internet is, it's just like, yeah, this is only for your friends or for yourself. Like, if this gets anywhere past a certain level, you just do not. Yeah. yeah. Self, the sharing, self discovery is important. Yeah, the sharing it's aspect like, of it is what can really get weird and dangerous, you yeah. know? Like, and the doing stuff for the, um, what is it? The... Uh, likes basically like doing oh, stuff yeah. to get because like that's i mean even even with like um like something stupid like art for for me specifically is like i don't really want to post my stuff because i don't want to do it for likes and i don't want to have people like have you know have that type of control over my extra hobby you know but like with the drumming thing it's my business so i don't really have a choice but i'm okay with it. I've, I've come to terms with the drumming stuff right but um whenever it comes down to that it, it's whenever people are impressionable like younger um like hey i'm comments, going to mutilate myself for likes those comments and stuff like that are just they can they can really really wreak havoc on a on a um on a young uh, mind self, yeah self-esteem and and all mm -hmm. that or like or just like trying to like like it, it, it could do one of two things. It could like it could either sort of like shut them down from this and be like, oh, this isn't this isn't for me. Then I should probably like leave this or create a new account or something like that. Or it'll like kind of push them to like um uh, like keep going out of like out of spite and like going on to do like more extreme <laughs> things. Yeah, I can see that, and I, I would say like the biggest thing is for if you know if any parent out there has a kid that wants to get into content creation, it's like mm, go slowly. You know, like go slowly, let, let them make videos, like let them share videos with their friends and stuff like that. Um, but just be, be on the lookout for those types of things. You know, like if they're, if they're like pushing themselves a little bit harder than they need to, like, because I, I, I help out with uh, a lot of kids in the youth group, youth group, youth group. Wow. Um, and a lot of them always have questions about like, oh, you have, you have this and that for YouTube and whatnot. And they're, they're always making fun of my viewer count and stuff like that. It's like, haha, you have this many, but you're only getting this many views. I'm like, I put out a video every day. Shut up. But um, <laughs> like, quantity, not quality, my sir. But anyway, well, they, they, they also don't understand like the business model. As exactly. Well. Yeah. They, they, they're kids, right? They're kids. And they're always trying to get a rise out of you and stuff like that. Because uh, yeah, because they're they're saying like you've got this many subs, but you're only getting this many views. But but you're just like, OK, you try then. Yeah, exactly. Like that's how I feel about it. But at, at the end of the day, like they're just having fun. But whenever like and I'm not a parent. I don't freaking know, but all I can, all, the only advice I could ever give a parent for raising a kid is like, I mean, let them be creative, but in a sandbox, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like, like that's what I would, uh, what I would say for that. Don't, don't quite open the floodgates to the cruel open world quite yet. Yeah. Like let give, give <laughs> let them, them time be kids. To, yeah. yeah let, let them spray, spray them with a hose every now and then don't open the uh, <laughs> dam, you know, <laughs> let, <laughs> like, yeah, like, like let, let them be kids and like, let them, 
like let them make some mistakes that are like that that are like recover reco- recoverable and like no one to step in. That's the big one. That's the big mm-hmm. one. I feel like a lot of a lot of parents don't get is no one to nope. step in. Yeah, and once again. I, I'm not a parent, so I'm not casting judgment on anybody, but that is one of the biggest things that I see is like, yo, step in and like, you know, you're the parent. You gotta you gotta like take control of the situation. I uh I, I'm on the fe- cause I have a I have a nephew who's probably like one and a half no, he's, I think he's two now. I'm uh I'm concerned if he's ever gonna find my content and how much of that he's gonna repeat back to his parents and the <laughs> conversations I'm gonna have to have with my brother and his uh, and his wife. John, I'm gonna be go- I'm gonna be coming to you for advice on that. Uh, well, my advice is just tell your 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 sister, or brother, or family member like that up front because my sister knows about Rosa, and I'm but I'm just like yeah, I had to cosplay this for charity. There's a long thing behind it. I'm not gonna explain that, but yeah, that's it. So if the if the boy suddenly like, uh, mom, Uncle Jonathan has big boobs, uh, she'll be just like. <laughs> All right, I'll text my brother. What's he up to? What's he done this time? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. The internet is, is a crazy place. <laughs> is, that, is that the sign we should wrap up then? Or what are we feeling? Um, I mean, I think we've gone we've gone everywhere tonight. It's been fun. Yeah, I, I mean, I, here's the also, I got my play tunic message across, so like I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> It's oh. kind of a kind of a weirder episode, I think. Eh, this I, this feels like an earlier episode, to be perfectly honest. We didn't we didn't go like as off the rails. Like a lot of this was just like serious discussion with some jokes thrown in. Not so trust much me. Like the... I, I, I was sitting on something, and I was like, I'm just <laughs> throw this in. I'm just throw this in. I want to know. I want to know so bad, but I didn't. What was it? Do you do you? This is going to take five minutes. Sure, go. Hey, if everyone else is down, this, I'm down. You want to go on this journey with me? Yeah. <laughs> Steven, I always want to go on a journey with you. Steven journeys are the best right, journeys. Right, they are the best. best. I want to talk about something. I got to get it off my chest. Go sandwiches? Oh, God. Okay. Sandwiches. Okay. This is a discussion I recently had with, with my friends, uh, and I wanted to talk about it with, with you friends also. Um, what? First off, let me, let, me, let, me start, let me open with this. Do you regularly make sandwiches at home? I do not. Rarely, no. Yes. Okay, Tom. This will be a there will be a question for you before we 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 reopen this up more I broadly. I feel like I've I feel like I've just entered an interrogation by answering yes. You you it was the it was the incorrect answer. So, you make mm-hmm. a sandwich at home. What do you typically and this is this is key, typically make on your sandwich at home? So this is not what you would like love to have on a sandwich. It's just you're going to make a sandwich whether you typically keep around ingredient wise to put on the sandwich turkey spinach tomato sriracha wow you were prepared you make sandwiches often enough that you were ready to spit that out and uh i forgot what the type of bread is called that that is the one thing i could not spit out T- type of bread that's got it's got like uh, it's got like the like the seeds and the nuts in it mostly seeds oh I think it's, it was like a weird it was like a weird hipster brand like too, a rye my dad like recommended a, like a power bread like, like a power like seed like bread date? Multigrain, I'm seeing in chat. Yeah, to... multigrain. I, I, I think I think it is. I think it is a multigrain. Yeah. Okay. So now Dave's, I, I, Dave's Killer Bread. That's the brand. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Dave's. Okay. So that I, I, I'm I'm happy with that because that's like you know, so I I like the idea of people making sandwiches at home. So now let's open it up <laughs> to include John and Jared. Okay. Kay. You're going to. A, a sandwich place okay. where you get to pick everything out. You get to choose your type of bread. You can choose whatever toppings you want. The whole spread. Steven. I want to know one by one your sandwich. I feel like a sandwich tells a lot about a person. Steven. So I'd like to know what you put on a sandwich. Are you saying that they're going to Subway? <laughs> Let's not let's not put a label on this because if we if we say that it's Subway, it might put into your head a very specific image. <laughs> I want this to be like your is happy there, place. Okay. You're, so, so you're there, there pl- like yeah, there's plenty of sandwich shops other than Subway that that have sort of like that Subway model where like where you can exactly. like pick out your ingredients. Firehouse there's subs. Sub- let's say you go yeah. to Firehouse subs or which which there's so many places. You're just you're going to get a nice sandwich. This is like mm, this is a treat. You're going to get a sandwich and you're going to pick out whatever you want. Tom 
what do you put on that sandwich? Ooh. It's the hardest <laughs> question that has been asked to, of you. Yeah, probably, yeah, yeah. Ever. How is that yeah. a hard question, though? Because okay, John, you start then. All right. <laughs> Whole wheat, lettuce, tomato, cucumber slices, a little bit of uh, sub sandwich sauce if they have it. Usually chicken is the main meat, and add in some bacon and some uh, avocado. Or guacamole, okay. rather. Sorry, guacamole. Inter- I, I, interesting choice on the cucumber slices. That's an interesting. That's an interesting addition. You don't normally I, hear that one. Listen, Sorry, I, I ask people this question a lot. All right. Well, well. I mean, at the very least, even I could tell you my regular Subway order. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, do you only do you only order Subway uh, from hell? <laughs> <laughs> So, no, 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 my no, turn. Listen, no, no, listen. There's, 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 listen, there's a subway next to the gym I go to. <laughs> oh, okay. Eat that gym fresh. is not in hell. Eat fresh. Yeah, no, that that gym, that gym, and that's and that subway, subway are not in hell. <laughs> is it a is it a murder subway located next to a murder gym? <laughs> <laughs> it is not a murder subway located next to a murder gym. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> So is it is it my turn to say my sandwich now? <laughs> Jared, you go ahead. You go ahead. Okay. Uh, meatball sub with um, Parmesan cheese. That is what I would normally get if I was going for a really just a nice sandwich from a place where I didn't have to make it. That uh, and and white bread because wheat bread freaks in my stomach. That's it. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Very very uh, simple man. This, oh, here, this here, here, I got I got a follow up <laughs> question. I always got a follow up question for the meatball sub guys. Go for um, it. You got your meatballs. You got your marinara. Mm-hmm. Any additions? You do a little oregano. You do a little parmesan. I'm just curious. Uh, not if I can help it. I mean, parmesan cheese would probably be the thing that I put on there. I, I actually would prefer no cheese. Like um, really? Okay. Yeah. I, I'm not a cheese guy, dude. Well, I, I take that back. I do like cheese if it's like a really sharp cheddar on its own, just taking nibbles of it because I'm, yeah. I'm weird. I'm like, I'm, I'm apparently not a bunny rabbit. I'm a mouse. But um, <laughs> but freaking, yeah, whenever it comes down to that, like I usually ask for no cheese on my meatball sub from uh, Firehouse. Um, if I'm at if I'm at Subway or somewhere else, like, like uh, Jimmy John's or whatever, I'll do like a nice Italian, I guess. Like, yeah. Just a bunch of other ones, no cheese and a classic uh, sandwich, and pickles. That's about it, and lettuce. I would say, oh, I'm yeah. very, Fire, very Firehouse, like, simple. When I'm in the states, Firehouse is a really good Italian. Yeah, Firehouse yeah. good Italian, and, uh, and Firehouse very is good meatball. I, yes, that's where I get my meatballs. Firehouse from, very good meatball. They they uh, slice it down the center, which is yep. uh, honestly a, a really great way of doing it. I am sad because of the fact that freaking uh, Jersey Mike's no longer has a meatball sub. And that makes me very sad. Hmm. But yeah. Interesting. I mean, like, if it makes you feel any better, neither does... I don't think Witch Witch has a meatball sub, do they? <laughs> uh, Witch Witch... I, mm, I think they do. I don't regularly order a meatball sub. It's pretty rare. But I <laughs> last I checked, they did. I like the surf and turf at Witch Witch. Dan asks me, Jared, I thought we were cheese friends. We are, but it has to be, like... By itself, I only like cheese by itself, not mixed into something. Oh, else. do you? Are you? Are you like a charcuterie kind of guy? I don't know what that means. Like a like like <laughs> that, that's that's sort of like, like a well. I mean, well, he is. I guess not then. <laughs> no, he, he is because it's like, it's that's like a variety, can, a variety of like cheese. cheeses. It's like a, a variety a cheese of like platter. Meats. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I love that. Like little little cubes and like uh, slices yeah. of cheese. Man, I'll yep. freaking do that all day long. Yeah. You, like, you got your like your deli meats and your adult lunch rolls exactly. Yeah, yeah, maybe like maybe like some fruits mm-hmm. on there. Yeah, like it was. Um, I I remember we were we were doing stuff for two coliseums ago, and I was like, oh no no, it wasn't that. It was a uh, it was a John stream, and I was just like, I got some cheese and some prosciutto because I couldn't say the word. You saying prosciutto like that reminded me of of how you pronounce that one Bizzard the Wizard title. Yeah. It's like Wizard the Wizard. Too many consonants help. So Tom, what is your you're going out to get a sandwich? What do you what do you get? Okay, so my normal order at Subway oh, is uh the <laughs> is a foot long <laughs> foot long urban cheese bread. Um good choice. Sometimes they're turkey, sometimes they're tuna. Um Ooh. 
no cheese, toasted. Uh, even the tuna, I like I like the tuna melt, even though melt implies there's cheese on it, but f forget it. Um, comes out of the oven, I get spinach, tomato, onions, jalapenos, and sriracha on it. I love my sriracha. So hmm. you 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 tend to lean into a spicy sandwich. I like spice, yes. You like spice, okay. All right, like, what, I, I, what was the point of this tangent? What do you mean? What, I, I wanted to know what sandwiches you guys <laughs> Well, I mean, like, uh, Stephen, I seem to recall, uh, uh, we can go on another tangent here, I seem to recall a discussion from a breakfast stream this morning about menus. <laughs> Listen, we do not have time for this. <laughs> <laughs> next next month, next month. Next month. Uh... I could go half an hour about how upset I am that more places don't offer pictures on the menus because it takes you no time mentally to process what the picture is and what's going to be included in the dish than to read menu item after menu item, listing ingredient after ingredient, just to process that mentally and think, oh, how many eggs and how many hash browns do I get with this thing? Just show me a damn picture. I am so, I am so happy with this, with this, uh, with this outcome. But Stephen, Stephen, what about taco places? That. Uh, Listen, there, there's a, there are problems. There are problems in society, but we can solve them with picture menus. Mexican restaurants are one of the, the, the biggest aggregators here because you've got issues where people are um, making all of these different dishes and they have ingredients that are the same ingredients. And if you're just listing them and you're not showing photos, that's a problem. This is also a huge problem with uh, sushi restaurants because... A lot of times you have these sushi places that it's like a hundred different rolls that you can choose from and your eyes just glaze over because they've listed eel cucumber sauce like 60 times and you're like, what is what? I don't know. Just show me a photo. Steven, I want to give you... We the live in a society! <laughs> I want to give you the biggest migraine ever at some point by showing up with a Cheesecake Factory menu with no pictures. I've been to the Cheesecake Factory, and it is an affront to God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the that's menu. correct. It, the answer them, to your question above. was yes, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, we can, we can end now. That, I'm, 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 I'm <laughs> saying it. Thank you all for giving me your time. I thought this journey was leading somewhere. I did not realize this was a it's the journey, not the destination situation. Do you know me? <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, you were so adamant about it. I thought this was the one time. I'm adamant about everything. Get I was expecting you to break out of like, this is what your hot dog, this is what your sandwich topping says about you. I don't have a chart. This isn't a bus. Tom likes quiz. spicy, which means that he's great in bed. <laughs> Stuff like that. Guys. I just like to know what you want on your sandwich. I learned a good bit. I did. Uh, if, uh, maybe, can I lighten the mood a little bit? I have a, sure. I have a soft spot for Cheesecake Factory because it was the location where John Emil and Tim asked me to be a guest for Runaway Guys the first time. Oh. <laughs> oh, Game Boy's pointing out that Steven didn't point out a sandwich, but I want to travel back to Tom's point and that say that's adorable. I had no idea yeah. about that. That was uh, that was I can't remember what year it was, but it was Pax East. We all it was like the the last day of Pax East. We all went out to dinner at a Cheesecake Factory. You guys yeah. pulled me aside. I was like, "Hey, would you want to do? Uh, would you want to do uh, Runaway Guys and uh, like a guest on Runaway Guys with us? And if so, what game would you want?" And that's how we did Rayman Legends. That was probably 2015. Then I think. I think so. I was still living in Connecticut at that time. I I was it that same year that I came down because uh because I remember that year I went with you guys to MomoCon. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm also thinking of when you came down for Overcooked. That was, was 2019. That was 2018, that was November 2019. 2019, yeah. Anyway, there's a 0% chance that I'm going to tell everyone my sandwich because you got to keep the people guessing. So you want to go to the end topics? Well, it seems well like, here's it the thing, like though. You, Mal already like said it like, in chat, Yeah, I was going to say, it seems like your wife has, uh, has disclosed she that information. She wrong, by the way. Ham, whole right. wheat, deli mustard, uh, it must be deli, and lettuce and tomato. What, what is exactly wrong about this, Steven? She left out pickles, which is insane to me. Ah, oh, you're one of those people. I Wait. told you, I told John, 
learning about what people put on their sandwich tells you a lot about the person. Those people? What do you mean? I like pickles. Uh, uh, is, uh, okay, are these like are these like pickles? <laughs> oh, oh, pick, let's these, fight right these, here at the end. Are, are these are these <laughs> pickle are these pickle discs that go on the sandwiches, or is it a wedge that goes next to the sandwich? No, it's it pick. <laughs> also, I love the phrase. Pickle discs. Pick, pickle discs. They are called <laughs> chips. They're called dill chips. I forgot what they were called. <laughs> I, I'm going to accept discs. I'm, going to, I'm discs. going to call them discs. Very easy to pick that word up, though. Be careful. <laughs> How many pickle oh. discs you got? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, when I was playing Monster Rancher, I kept calling disc chips dicks chips. <laughs> That's just a it. good time. Oh, God. I love all sandwiches. Like if I'm if I'm real talk, if I'm gonna go out, I I I almost always vary the sandwich I'm gonna get. Anyway, I, uh, I, well, I always also have to like, do that. And also like a like you know TMZ exclusive. We found out uh, Steven's favorite sandwich. <laughs> there you TMZ. Go. But at home, at home, I I tend to eat ham on whole wheat with pickles, deli mustard. It must be deli mustard. It has to be spicy horseradishy deli mustard. Um, any sort of cheese, whatever we have around. I de- I t- tend to have ham, but I don't really care. And that's that's enough. But if we have lettuce and tomato around, it'll ap- it'll definitely go on the sandwich. There you go. <laughs> excellent, Beautiful. excellent. I had a I had a friend who once told me uh, <laughs> the topic of lettuce came up uh, for this. Uh, this uh. I had a friend tell me that that iceberg le- lettuce is the Walmart of lettuce. I mean, they're right. <laughs> they're not wrong. Oh my god! I know we're trying to like wrap up here, but I just got one more story to tell. I had a friend in high school who was like, like he was he wasn't like he was not like crazy by any like stretch of the imagination. But one thing that he would get on every now and again was how he wants to create a hybrid of human shark people. And uh, when he, he and I, I'm, he's a scientist now. Like I caught up with him like after he graduated college, and he is a scientist. And like, I'm, and he's, he talked he talked about wanting to make a human shark hybrid named Sharkleton Heston. And uh, <laughs> and the best part the, the best part of this is his last name is McGill. Oh my wow. God, destiny! He was made for this moment. <laughs> Amazing. All right. Anyway, I, I assume. <laughs> sorry, I, I've been laughing because people in chat have been saying, St- "Tell this to Steven just to upset him even more." And it's like, no, maybe we should actually wrap up. <laughs> listen, listen. I have unending energy if I'm mad. So let's just finish <laughs> what we can. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. The first four-hour disco only podcast where we just keep Steven in a perpetual state of anger. And all it took Do was saying I don't like mustard. Menus again. <laughs> all right. All right. The talking points for this month's episode of Disc Only. Four April Fools. Flappy cards. Warm drank. Time capsule list. Foxy boy. I ain't no quitter. Stained <laughs> with blood. Smidge of horror. Streaming stuff. Kids on the interwebs. Steven's menu rant. <laughs> and sandwich situation. And sharks. We we squeezed in sharks. And, at the and end sharks. There. And sharks at the end. All right. Always time for sharks. Uh, folks, what do you got coming up? Tom, take it away. Uh, I have. I'm just, Oblivion's still going strong. Uh, we entered the Shivering Isles after episode 100, and uh, I think we're pretty close to finishing up the side quest. We just got to move on to the uh, the main quest, and after that, we'll be back in uh, in Cyrodiil. Aside from that, I've been streaming uh, Kirby the Forgotten World. Um, I've been streaming Tunic, but I think it's better if people play it themselves, honestly. Um, I'm, trying th- <laughs> I'm trying to think of what else. Uh... Maybe getting like a Mario Kart group together at some point. And plus I got my, uh, my, uh, what do you call them? Oh, I'm still doing Mario 3D World as well. What did I say? Kirby and the for- <laughs> uh, Yeah, did I say, what did I say? Kirby the Forgotten what? Probably World. Oh, Kirby, yeah, okay. Better than the other one I said before, uh, before. Um, but anyway, uh. 
yeah, I got my like my uh, highlights going up. If you want the shortened versions of them, and maybe see the the full versions of some point, I don't know. And uh, and vlogs going up as well. Uh, aside from that, I don't got much, but something might be happening in May, maybe into June. Ooh, Steven. Steven goes after Tom. I go yeah. after Tom. Uh, so since the last uh, thing, the last cast, which I guess was was really just Chaos Cookie, um, we launched uh, we launched Pokemon onto Steven Plays. And it's a, it's a pretty big departure from what we've done in the past with the series on the channel because it's a whole series, but every episode is cut way more like a highlights video. And it makes, in my opinion, it makes Pokemon a lot more fun and digestible. It's not for everyone, but if it's not for you, that's okay too because you can watch the uncut stuff on the Steven VOD channel. So you kind of get to choose your own adventure. You want to watch 25-minute episodes, go to the VOD channel. If you wish that, man, if, if only these were cut down to like eight minutes... With funny jokes, we've done that too. Um, and by we, I mean Dan. Dan's done a really great job with it. Um, we've also been playing Kirby in the Forgotten Land, and um, those are more normal episodes, and those have been no, coming no, out world. too. No, no, world. Kirby in the Forgotten World. <laughs> Kirby in the Forgotten Universe. Um, and that's, that's really uh, all that's on the channel right now, is we've been alternating between that, and we're actually now going to start alternating Fridays, so this Friday, we're going to be going back to Pokemon. I think we last finished the Sylph Company, so I don't know. Where, where are you going next? Saffron? Something like that? You're in Saffron if you're at the Sylph Company. Oh, I'm in Saffron, so i got to go wherever. I don't know. So that's that's going to be Friday, and then next week we'll return to Kirby, and we'll just kind of alternate back and forth <coughs> each Friday until one of them ends. <laughs> <laughs> then the right. other one will end, too, at the same and, time, yes, no matter where, where it is in the series. Eventually. I am uh, drumming uh, Monday, Tuesday, Friday, Saturday, uh, 4.30 as normal. Um, a lot of Guilty Gear content is going to be going up on YouTube here soon with the new VTuber stuff. And um, yeah, uh, just releasing a video every day, 2 p.m. on YouTube. I hope to be able to keep that up as long as I can. <laughs> That's about it for me. Nice. Uh, same for me, usual deal, Monday, Wednesday, Saturday. Uh, this Saturday, I'm taking part in a charity event run by 7-Eleven Canada where I'm playing Rocket League against other Canadian content creators and we're raising money for charity. Whatever charity we're raising for gets a donation from 7-Eleven no matter where we get eliminated in the tournament and the actual uh, winning winning group gets $4,000 for their actual charity too. So uh, I'm going to have to get really good at Rocket League by Saturday. <laughs> Uh, otherwise, no stream actually next Monday because my lovely wife, Luca Jin, is taking off for a little bit to go visit her parent. She's going to go see her mom and her brother. So, uh, I'm going to shift around game clearing, but we're wrapping up Luigi's Mansion on game clearing. Then we're finishing up Odd World Stranger's Wrath. Then we're finishing up Mist. Uh, and I've been told apparently on YouTube, at least on Lucas channel, you will start seeing a group let's play from us next week. And I think you will uh, enjoy it. You said uh charity and it reminded me, I will, uh, I also have a charity stream on the 15th for direct relief, uh, music sessions. Um, they're doing it. There's a bunch of, uh, other creators that are doing it along uh, with me and then on the 13th actually i'm probably going to be doing another power wash simulator with uh, Massey because we've been wanting to do that again so the garbage bin is getting back together again <laughs> nice. nice all right as always last word goes to dan dan what's going on in your life tomorrow's Ooh, dan's birthday happy Yay! birthday and apparently dan has become our logo oh, oh that happened <laughs> that's cool <laughs> Okay. Yeah, sorry. I, I put that in today. I, I made sure to get that ready today for for the actual podcast because I thought it was hilarious that we had exactly the right letters for it. That's oh, perfect. that's great. <laughs> do, do, um, do, do, do. Damn. But yeah, I... <laughs> sorry. It's caught me off guard. Um, yeah, tomorrow I'm actually going to be doing a birthday stream, uh, I believe, Animal Crossing at 5 p.m. Eastern. So if you want to come by, say hi. Do that. Do it. Um, you won't. 
<laughs> Dan, Dan's stream is a threat. <laughs> I haven't heard that in a while. <laughs> Show up and see what um, what's next. Yeah, um, but yeah. Oh, and um, Stephen and I actually just did a Star Wars stream. Uh, the vibe for that will be coming out because uh, Lego Star Wars just came out, so um, it was super fun. Yeah. We got to play. We played all of uh, Episode Four. Also, that new Star Wars game is is really good. Because yeah. I was like, "Oh, it's just a port." It's not. <laughs> it's actually not. They did a really incredible oh, job. Remake. Yeah. It got delayed like um, a year, so I would hope so. It's bad yeah, how it's limited the sc- good. It's bad how limited the scope of my Star Wars games is. Because when you said Star Wars, I was like, "You stream Kotor." <laughs> nope. Don't want to step not. on your on your toes, Tom. <laughs> I wasn't outraged that well I was outraged that I missed it but like no we, like, we streamed I, the I, one I, where I want, where, more, I want more people to play KOTOR rip their arms off <laughs> cause that happens oh, oh come now Dismember, dismemberment is nothing new to the Star Wars franchise it's really true sadly oh yeah have y'all ever did y'all know that I don't believe there's any punching in Star Wars like the no, films? it's all guns and swords. Yeah, I thought. Chewie, I realized that like, today. Dex a dude. In Return of the Chewie Jedi, Chewie does seem like the type that would use physical combat. But yeah, in in the Lego Star Wars game that we played today, it, there's a there's a huge combo system. So I was pre- I was playing Princess Leia, and I was just like kicking people onto the floor and it was like yeah 48 combo and i was like yeah i felt like i was playing mortal Kombat. it was great i mean like in uh there's a red herring in kotor where like when you get zalbar you get his uh you get his bowcaster early on and he's terrible with ranged weapons if you're ever playing kotor give give the give the wookie a sword <laughs> and with so, that i bent my wookie oh i'm sorry oh Dan, well, happy birthday to you as it comes up tomorrow. Also, happy birthday today to Nintendo Capri Sun. Yeah, Tim's, yeah, Tim's, Tim's birthday, birthday today. today. And Emil's birthday is Friday, I do believe, as well. Yeah. So it's a, yep. Is it your birthday wife's birthday. birthday tomorrow, too, Stephen? Yeah, Mal's birthday is also tomorrow. Yeah, Mal and Dan have the same birthday. <laughs> my brother's mm-hmm. birthday is on the 8th, too. What the frick? What happened? This, this, is, a, this is a busy birthday my week. Bro- my brother's birthday is on the 7th. <laughs> The heck is going on this week? Wait, did you say your birth? My brother's birthday is the seventh. No, oh, on the eighth. The eighth. No, I said my brother's birthday is on the seventh. Oh. Yeah, yeah my two brothers. Eighth. Everybody just get. Everybody just getting old at the same time, man. <laughs> time waits for no man. Also, Dan, you're going to be on my stream next week. Hopefully, you didn't forget. <gasps> Yay! I didn't. I wrote it down. Yay! I'm <laughs> counting. The milliseconds. <laughs> <laughs> you you can up that to actual seconds. It's okay. Yeah, oh, Dan and MC are going to be joining us for some Mario Party next week, uh, next Wednesday, and someone else? Question mark? Because there's a fourth slot. We'll figure that out. But anyways, let's wrap up for the evening. As always, thanks everybody for hanging out. A special thank you to Popsky for our theme song, Prism Shard for our logo, Paper Pennies for the beautiful art in our intro, and of course, Dan is our producer <laughs> and someone just sent me a message to say dibs god damn it uh all right the next episode of disc only is probably may 3rd is anything getting in the way of that for any of us do we know yet mm, not that i know of uh, i don't think so let's assume not we'll probably see you may 3rd and if we don't we'll see you at some point after that take it easy everybody see y'all next time Bye. So, so John, they can't hear us. They they can still hear us. No, yeah, this the the, the outro the outro is audible. Yeah, but can okay. they can they hear us? If the mics whisper? the mics are <laughs> one of the these days. I am so actually hot. just gonna mute this and just not tell oh. any of you. <laughs> Listen, the mics are the mics are so hot that like the, the timely reference Paris Hilton is suing. <laughs> Very timely. What? Timely. What year is it? The year is 2003. How long have I been asleep? <laughs> You've been asleep for negative 19 years. 
I hate when that happens. <laughs> and then RoboCop shot the stream. Night, everybody. Goodbye.